good morning dear students in uh, today's session uh, we will discuss about uh, the non circular cross section used for helical springs so in the pre one of the previous sessions we have discussed uh, the helical compression spring and helical tension spring uh, by using or which is made up of circular cross section so here the cross section of the helical spring uh, that is either rectangle or square so with respect to that the first thing that we consider we shall consider the rectangular cross section so in rectangular cross section means uh, there are two dimensions or that uh, of the cross section they are to be uh, used here such as uh, h uh, be the uh, side of the rectangle parallel to the axis and uh, b is the width of the rectangle which is measured perpendicular to the uh, axis of the helical spring so that h that we can see here so this is the dimension h that is uh, measured parallel to the axis of the shaft and this one is uh, the width b or the side b of the rectangle measured parallel to, uh, perpendicular to the helical spring or axis of the helical spring and uh, in addition to that the mean diameter d that remains same no doubt uh, the only cross section is rectangle here but uh, the particular spring or the coil that is having circular in nature itself hence the mean diameter remains d itself and uh, di that is the inside diameter of the helical spring that is uh, uh, given by d minus b b is the particular dimension which is measured perpendicular to the uh, axis of the uh, spring so di is d minus d b and d naught is outer diameter of the spring or coil that is d plus b uh, next uh, we have to see uh, the spring index so spring index uh, is defined as c itself or notation by means of a notation capital c itself but here this is not the ratio of uh, mean diameter of coil to the wire diameter because here the particular cross section is not circular hence the spring index is defined as the mean diameter of the coil divided by the dimension that is cross section say either width or length of the cross section say b or h so here there are two possible cases so in the beginning say if b if it is less than the value of h say b is less than the value of h the dimension measured perpendicular to the helical spring axis if it is less than the dimension that is h which is measured along or parallel to the helical spring axis in that case the ratio of spring index is d by b d is mean diameter of coil and b is the dimension measured perpendicular to dimension of the cross section measured perpendicular to the helical uh, spring axis and uh, if suppose if uh, the dimension which is measured parallel to the axis of the spring is less than the dimension of the cross section measured perpendicular to the axis of the spring that is h is less than b in that case the spring index is given by the ratio d by h so these are the two things that we have to remember while calculating the spring index so spring index is either d by b or d by h d by b or d by h so that is depending upon the values of b and h suppose if b is less than h then the spring index is d by b suppose if b is greater than h or h is less than b in that case the spring index is given by the ratio of capital d to the h and uh, the other notations they are as usual d is mean diameter of coil i is number of active turns that remains same what we have discussed in the previous session related to helical compression spring d not and di and d or all the uh, values of or the dimensions of the diameter of coil say inside diameter outside diameter and uh, mean diameter of the coil so this is what the notations and along with that the load which is acting along the axis that is axial load f 
the same notation that is carry forwarded and uh, in the next page so the other notation say here also we have to calculate the wall stress factor so that is what k k is given by 4c minus 1 divided by 4c minus 4 plus 0 0.165 6 0.615 it is divided by c 0.615 divided by c so which is equation number 11.3a page number 171 of the data handbook so this is what the calculation of k wall stress factor but c is what here c is either d by b or d by h depending upon the values of b and h if b is greater than if b is less than h then d by b is to be used if b is greater than h then d by h is to be used so as usual uh, with respect to the procedure the first step is to calculate the wire diameter there in case of helical spring with a circular cross section but here the dimensions they are to be calculated so with respect to the first step we have to go for the calculation of dimensions so that is b and h b and h so these are the two values that are to be calculated so you have to use again the shear stress equation what we have used in case of helical compression spring that is circular cross section but here non circular so you have to use page number 171 of data and book equation number 11.13a so there the equation is given as tau is equal to k wall stress factor multiplied by axial force f d is the mean diameter of the coil into bracket 1.5 h plus 9.9 b divided by b square into h square so this is what the expression say this expression that we have to make use here when the, when the value of uh, h is greater than b and uh, as well as the k is wall stress factor which is calculated by using above equation so this is 0.615 here not 165 uh, and here the denominator that contains two values that is b square and h square so b h is the actual cross sectional area for this rectangular cross section so by using this relation uh, tau value will be known and k value that is uh, with respect to the value in terms of b or in terms of h or in terms of a particular numerical value f is the excel force and d is the mean diameter of the coil so that uh, you will be getting the values of uh, b and h so if you uh, and here also one more thing that is uh, either b is to be expressed in terms of h or h is to be expressed of expressed in terms of uh, b so once you get this value uh, b and h the next step is to go for the calculation of mean diameter of the coil so that is capital D so capital D is either C into B or C into H depending upon the values of um, B and H suppose if H is greater than B then uh, the equation is CB so, or uh, otherwise it will be C into H if uh, B is greater right so this is what the expression that is to be used right depending upon the values of uh, B and H the equations or the notations they are uh, shown here and after this uh, mean diameter inner inside diameter of the coil di d minus b and outer diameter of the coil that is uh, d plus uh, b so these are the two parameters or two more diameters that we have to calculate and after this the step three as usual so that is the number of active coils that we have to calculate so to calculate number of active coils we have to make use of uh, uh, deflection equation itself deflection equation is uh, as good as the equation what we have used uh, in the uh, helical compression spring with a circular cross section but here uh, instead of d we have to use b and h so this is available in uh, data handbook uh, uh, in data handbook equation number 11.13b page number 172 so by using this uh, equation so that equation is y equal to 2.83 into i into f into d cube that is mean diameter of the coil raised to 3 multiplied by b square plus h square divided by b cube into h cube into capital G where capital G is modulus of rigidity of the material right and f is axial force mean diameter of the coil and y is usually known 
so with this uh, these known values substitute all here and get the value of i so we have to re rearrange the terms to get the value of i so this is with respect to step 3 and uh, step 4 that is the calculation of free length so free length calculation that equation remains same here l naught is greater than or equal to i plus n into bracket h plus y plus a i is active number of coils and n is number of additional turns that are required uh, and uh, y is the axial deflection y is axial deflection and a is the clearance that is given so all these say this is again you have to refer from table number 11.4 itself uh, based upon the end condition so this is what the standard equation that we have to refer so here uh, there are something that is specified so we are usually assuming n as additional number of coils 2 for square and ground ends e is clearance that is 25 percent of y so uh, once you calculate free length the next step is to go for the calculation of uh, pitch so pitch is given by l naught minus 2 h here L naught minus 2H. There the value was uh, D, 2D, but here you have to use 2H instead of D divided by I, right, for squared and grounded itself. And uh, then the stiffness that you have to calculate that is F naught by Y, F naught is equal to F by Y, and uh, free length of the wire that is uh, capital L pi into capital D into I dash, where I dash is I plus N. So this is what the uh, procedure. So procedure that includes in the first step you have to go for the calculation of B and H by using the shear stress equation. Next you have to go for the calculation of mean diameter of the coil and after that the other two dimensions that is DI and D naught and after that you have to go for the calculation of I by using deflection equation and then you have to you calculate free length of the wire and after that you have to go for the calculation of pitch and then stiffness and then uh, length of uh, wire so these are the seven steps that you have to proceed with so in the next case there is a problem uh, so let us consider a problem where the design or uh, design a rectangular section of a helical spring to mount a buffer to sustain a load of 30 kilo newton so the load is given and uh, the cross section that is rectangle rectangular cross section used for helical spring and uh, this is to be designed to sustain a maximum load of 30 kilo newton and uh, it is a load to deflect a maximum deflection of 90 mm and the spring is made of z nickel z nickel and uh, after this and after this, uh, say, the longer side of the rectangle is twice the shorter side. So, longer side is uh, twice the shorter side and the spring owned with the longer side of the rectangle parallel to the axis. So, longer side is of the rectangle is parallel to the axis. Longer side of the rectangle is parallel to the axis of the helical spring so h is uh, parallel to the axis here and h is the longer side right h is the side which is parallel to the axis of the helical spring and which is la longer here so h is greater than b and the c value is given as 10 and factor of safety that is given as 2.5 so this is uh, with respect to the statement of the problem so the next thing that is uh, you have to note down the given information so f is given 30000 newtons that is 30 kilo newton y is given as 90 mm and z nickel is the speed material used for the spring and this is the b and uh, the dimension which is to be measured uh, for parallel to the uh, axis that is h that is h so this is what the thing that is given here so by referring uh, the data handbook table 
that is the value of ultimate shear stress for z nickel so nickel z nickel that is uh, similar to chrome vanadium it's steel itself so use that value that is shear stress in ultimate uh, ultimate shear stress that is um, 830 mpa and the modulus of rigidity is 75.5 gpa and factor of safety is 2 so these are the values they are given here so you have to refer uh, the value of uh, shear stress uh, for uh, z nickel steel spring material from uh, table number 11.5 of data handbook which is available in page number 192 192 page number 192 of data handbook so by referring this table page number 192 of data handbook so you will be getting you will be getting the value of uh, shear stress as 830 mpa so this shear stress uh, that is available in column number 8 of data handbook and uh, column number 10 that gives the value of modulus of rigidity and factor of safety that is given as 2.5 so by using uh, the equation of uh, permissible shear stress permissible shear stress tau u divided by factor of safety so that is equal to 830 divided by 2.5 u that gives us a value of 332 uh, mpa mega pascal so by using these two values you have to go for the calculation so shear stress is known now so and also we have to uh, represent the larger side uh, which is h longer side is h parallel to the helical axis and uh, b is the shorter side perpendicular to the uh, the distance measured perpendicular to the uh, axis so the ratio which is given here in the problem statement that is uh, the longer side of the rectangle longer side of the rectangle is twice the shorter side that is h is uh, two times the b that is given here h is is equal to two times b so that is the given value and uh, by using this particular ratio that is uh, h by b is equal to 2 or h is equal to 2b as per the given statement so you can uh, use the this particular value in terms of h h as 2b and spring index that is given here as 10 so which is to be used uh, as a ratio of d by b mean diameter of the coil divided by the shorter side of the rectangular cross section that is b so b is less than h here therefore this is suitable and uh, after this uh, d is to be written in terms of small b that is 10 times b now you have to proceed with the, the design procedure design is to be based upon the maximum force so maximum force is 30 kilo newton so the first step is to find b and h b and h so to calculate b and h so these are the two parameters that you have to calculate here so by using uh, the relation of shear stress which is there in the data handbook page number 179 so kfd into bracket 1.5h plus 0.9b divided by b square into h square so this equation is already uh, available in page number 171 11.3 equation number 11.3 so this equation that you have to make use to calculate the values of b and h so here you have to calculate the stress uh, shear stress factor say wall stress factor that is k by using equation number 11.313a uh, so there itself we have that equation for wall stress factor and calculate wall stress factor by substituting the value of c as 10 so that you will be getting 1.148 for the c and uh, you have to substitute d as 10 times b and uh, h as 2 times b then uh, you will be getting the value of b as 32 mm and h as 2b that is 64 mm 
so then the second main step that is to calculate the mean diameter of the coil and di and d naught that is uh, by using the given relation and the third step that you have to go for the calculation of i number of active turns so you have to make use of deflection equation right so deflection equation that is available in page number 172 equation number 11.13 b so by using that equation substitute all other values see here the value of y that is given as 90 mm and uh, all the cal values they are calculated except the value of i substitute all other values and get the value of i so that value is 5 coils i is the number of active turns that are 5 and uh, then you have to go for the calculation of free length so free length equation that is as usual in case used in case of helical compression spring and assume squared and ground end for the end condition so that n is equal to 2 and y is equal to a is equal to 25% of y so that you will be getting the value of l not as 561 uh, and uh, next step you have to go for the calculation of p l not minus 2 h instead of uh, d you have to use h that is the longer side divided by i so the value of pitch is 86.6 mm and uh, similarly you have to calculate uh, stiffness and uh, free length of the wire similar to the procedure what we have discussed for the circular cross section so this is related to one of the problem similarly there is another cross section that is square cross section so in case of square cross section h and b they are equal there is no longer side there is no shorter side both sides of the particular cross section is same and here the equation for c is d by h or d by b and wall stress factor that remains same that is 11.13a page number 171 4c minus 1 divided by uh 4c minus 4 plus 0.615 divided by c so the same equation but c is what d by h or d by b so the next uh, the procedure so here the procedure remains same all seven steps only the change is uh, with respect to the equation of shear stress and deflection so shear stress equation is uh, tau is equal to 2.4 into kfd divided by h cube if you replace that uh, d by using uh, the equation of c that is c is equal to d by h so 2.4 kfc divided by h square one of h goes there with respect to c term so this equation is available in page number 173 equation number 11.5a of your data handbook so these are the notations h and b and uh, d and all those things they are already uh, discussed so all these notations that we have to make use again so after this is the first step where we have to go for the calculation of only one dimension that is h after that you will be getting the value of b because h and b both are same here next uh, you have to go for the calculation of mean diameter then uh, number of active turns so to calculate number of active turns you have to make use of deflection equation so y is equal to 5.66 i into f into d cube divided by g h4 g is modulus of rigidity d is mean diameter of coil and h is uh, side of the square and f is axial force and i i is the number of active turns so that is to be calculated by using equation number 11.15 b of page number 173 of your data handbook so once you get that uh, the free length is the next step calculation of free length and after that uh, pitch and then uh, stiffness and then l free length or total length of the wire so once you calculate all these things uh, that is what the procedure so according to this procedure this you have to solve that is square cross section helical spring of side uh, uh, for a slide to support an axial load of 1.8 kN and gives maximum deflection of 45 mm and spring is made of uh, silicon manganese steel so again you have to refer uh, table number 11.5 Uh, which is available in page number 191 now page number 191 so from that page of the data handbook you have to uh, get the value of tau u and the factor of safety is to be assumed as 2.5 or 3 and uh, then you have to proceed right so this is what the thing uh, that is remaining in a helical spring so i hope uh, you followed the procedure 
so follow according to this procedure solve some more problems uh, thank you